What's good, you guys? It's your boy, Jay Freshman, back with another tutorial for a long ass time. You know, I've been trying to get back in the rhythm to get these tutorials out for you guys. But I told myself, if I'm going to do this, I got to do it in a way where it's just efficient and fast. So not too much editing, not too much, you know, organizing and planning and out. So just really bear with me in these um couple of videos that I might start to make so that once I get back in the flow of things, I'll be able to clean up everything, organize everything, and really make this quality content for you guys. But everything I'm about to tell you right now is going to bring you value. Just really pay attention to what I'm telling you. Don't pay attention to the mess ups or the pops or the weird shit. Like really focus on what I'm telling you because I'm still giving you value at the end of the day. And today we're going to talk about how to use FL Studio 20. And this is just a beginner guide. I'm not going to go too in depth in a lot of things because that's just going to take too long like that will turn into a whole hour video and we do, we just don't have the time even though we're quarantined but um let's without a further to do i'm just going to start from the left to the right and then kind of bounce but for the most part this is what you're going to see when you open up fl studio you're going to see sounds that are already laid out for you and then when you go to file in the left hand corner, this is where you're going to start a new project, open up an old project, save your projects, save new versions of it, and you can export it either WAV or MP3. You don't have to really worry about the rest as far as being a beat maker and, you know, sound engineer. Um, I usually don't zip loop any packages. If you want to send shit, just kind of send it in the WAV, make everybody's life easier because they might not have the plugins you have. Or they um someone sending you stuff they they're not gonna you might not have the plugins they have so it's just a lot easier if, just tell them to send it and wave and you send it and wave and the more projects you make it's gonna show up right here in your recent projects edit add in pattern um so one thing about FL Studio there's a lot of ways to do the same thing so I'm not gonna really edit is um quite simple learn these shortcuts right here control z control x control z and control v these are just going to be a faster workflow so if you mess up on you know a pattern you could just control z real quick and that will undo it and just get those um shortcuts in your head to add pretty much is just adding your plugins but you usually wouldn't just come up here usually people you know come to the channel rack which is this that you're looking at which is also where um your patterns is going to be and they will click this plus sign and boom, and add it from there. And you can add in your own VST. So keep in mind, you can see that I have like Contact, Machine, OmniSphere, and Nexus. Those don't come with FL Studio. Those are, those are called third-party plugins, meaning these are plugins outside of FL Studio. These um, FL Studio, which is image line, they did not make Nexus. They did not make some of these plugins that a lot of people be, been using those are stuff you're going to have to buy and then once you buy it then you know you put it into your fl studio and i'll make another video of how to do that and then view you don't really have to pay attention to this unless you want to change your background um as you can see i have the amsterdam <laughs> amsterdam background i haven't seen my background in a long time because i always have the playlist which is this I'm blocking it and then options with options, you have this is where you want to put your MIDI control. If you have a piano, keyboard, um, drum pad, whatever. As you can see, I have my machine micro set up. As soon as you plug it in and you already downloaded the drivers before you open up FL Studio, if you had to download any drivers, um, do all that stuff first. Plug it in. It should pop up. If not, you can just always DM me. I'll answer. When it comes to audio, you pick out your sound card that you're using, meaning your interface, like your focus right or your M audio whatever whatever <laughs> interface you have you would just go to the drop down menu and click this you don't want to use any of the direct sound driver um devices especially if you're going to take this seriously like do yourself a favor and not use those and really get yourself an interface because there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens when you're using those that's going to really hinder your workflow hinder your process is going to like make you unmotivated to even make a beat because there's so much going on you know the, your files crackling too much or artifacts delays and all that it's just going to make you not want to make a beat so 
You don't want to be in that state. The only thing I would say right here with the buffer length, when you're recording, always have your buffer length at least at three milliseconds or below it. And that's either, you know, you're recording your melody on your piano or your drum pad or you're actually recording vocals. Because if you have it at like 12 or 6 milliseconds, there is going to be a delay that will throw you off, especially if it's at 12. And the reason why you want higher buffer lengths is so it could process a lot more so your computer doesn't crack and all this stuff when you're using big plugins like OmniSpare and other mix mixer effects. And we'll get more into that in later. But um, just keep that in mind. So if you've been having um, issues of delay latency, those mean the same thing. If you've been having issues with that, just kind of lower your buffer length. General, you don't have to really worry about that. Like I said, don't get too crazy. You don't have to read manuals and read books and thinking you have to know everything about FL because that would just only slow down your process. You want to only focus on the things that needs to be focused on and then you can learn everything little by little after that. Right here in the file, um, it's good to, if you have your own drum kits, Make one folder with all your drum kits and then, you know, find it, um, open it up here and then it will pop up right here in your browser section. I know I'm kind of going fast through this, but I really don't want to make this video like 30 minutes and shit. And if there's any questions, leave it in the comment below and I'll address that in the later videos. Tools. There's something convenient about tools, but it's more advanced that i'll explain help you always go to um help and then go to about wait actually not about go to help index and this will pop um this will show you the manual of everything that you need to know but like i said you don't need to get too crazy unless there's certain things that you want to know you can really go to your help index right here master knob and master pitch Master knob is like turning down your whole project. So now you can't really hear me. Master pitch will change the pitch of your whole project. You have pattern and song mode. Pattern is this. So if I'm creating something in the pattern mode, I'm going to turn this down because right here, um, this is the volume knob for this sound. And to the left of it is the pan, which is left and right. So just a quick sample. Right side, left side, middle, turn down, turn up, you can add kicks. So boom, now you have your pattern and then song mode is going to be in the playlist, which is this. Now, if you press play and nothing's playing because you haven't put anything into the um, playlist, so all you have to do is just kind of click, make sure you're either on your pencil tool or your um, paint paint tool so you can really put in your patterns. And you know, this is where you're gonna arrange your song pretty much. So you have your play button, you have your um, stop, you have your record, you have your tempo. And with the tempo, you could do three things. You could um, pick from these tempos or you could type it in or you could tap it. And if you're musically, if you're more musically inclined and you play pianos and you're good with your timing, you could kind of just tap it out. And then boom, it just makes it a lot easier. That's what I do. I know that was like a bad melody, but either way, to the to the right of it is the metronome. So now you can play with the metronome. So if you're not really musically inclined, at least hum out your melody and just kind of scroll with it. And remember to be in song mode or to be on a different pattern so not all the sounds are playing. Boom. And the rest, you could just kind of copy what I have here. With this, you want to have this on just so that when you're recording that it gives you a countdown instead of just recording um right away because if it records right away you're probably going to be late and you'll you'll probably mess up your arrangement that way and then you have your patterns so like i said when you go to channel rack and patterns they go hand in hand so let's say you have kicks on one pattern 
you have your snares on another melodies and you just keep building up you just keep adding patterns and then you put it all in the playlist when you're done so the five main things with fl studio just to get you started and to get you making a beat you will have your drum kits right here it will, it will have packs packs will come with fl studio you can use these drums to get you started and shit and then it's just a drag and drop from there and like i said i already showed you how to add in your vsts boom and once you let's just add in FFLs, boom so then you know this this icon right here is your browser you could make it disappear to save room you, that's the mixer this is your channel rack this is your piano roll and this is your playlist with the piano roll again like you probably not going to be going up here like i said there's many ways to do the same thing usually people will go to the piano roll by clicking on their sound right click and um go to piano roll and then type in their notes boom with drums you know since you're really going to stay on the same key unless you trying to get all crazy with your kicks and put kicks in different pitches while it's maintaining the original pitch unless you're going to get crazy with your kicks and, and your drums then you could go in the piano roll but you could just easily type out your rhythms right here boom but you wouldn't want to do that with the, with your instruments because it's only going to play that same key it's only going to play c so what I mean is like if you click on your sound, left click on your sound and go to the wrench tool, it's only going to play this note. So, and then the mixer is where you will bring your sounds in to like put on effects like, you know, parametric EQ and, you know, throw some reverb on the hug. You know, we can even throw... <laughs> just for the hell of it reverb on my voice and shit <laughs> you know so when you get all your sounds and so when you f like get your whole patterns arranged and everything and then you put it in your um playlist and arrange it you really want to bring all your sounds into the mixer so it could get mixed and when you track out or do anything to put on your beat stars or your air bit or whatever thing that you're going to put your beats out on. Now you can um, have each sound split individually. And I'll show you that in later stuff. Like, and the way you export, you will go to export, boom, and you'll export wave. And, you know, it will show you the folder and then it will show you the settings that, um, that will go with that. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Like I said, I haven't done tutorials in a minute. But that's how you really get started. Like, let me know in the comments below what you want me to go more in depth with. Like, so this way I could just do these videos in sections so that it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to pick up quickly. And you don't have to be staying at a computer for hours. So let me know in the comments below. And if you found this helpful, like and share, subscribe. Share with your other producer friends that are just now getting started with FL Studio. Thank you, guys.